Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Goodell and Psycho Goldfish. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be a fun one. I'm Goodell. I'm hosting today along with Psycho Goldfish. Say hello. Yo, boy! Yo, boy! What's up? And we are here with... Well, who are we, who are we here with? Who's here? All right. Uh, I'm Puffballs United, one of the co-founders of Inner Sloth. We meet Among Us. And I'm Forte Base. I don't know what I'm... I don't know my name. What are we going by uh, name? I'm the other <laughs> co-founder of Inner Sloth, and I do all the programming. And I'm Amu slash Amy. Um, I'm one of the other artists that worked on Among Us, and uh, yeah, get me. So, what's Among Us? I've never never heard of that. Never, I have no idea what that is. All right, <laughs> all right. Go to Twitch.com. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all are here today because Newgrounds just wrapped up its Among Us animation jam where the theme was the purple imposter. Mm -hmm. And uh, one very exciting element of that jam that I think everybody was very happy to see was that uh, y'all y'all coughed up a little little bit of money for that prize pool. It was uh, not <laughs> not a small amount that y'all chipped in there. Yeah. I mean, I, I always like to be able to give back to Newgrounds because I wouldn't be where I am today without Newgrounds and Tom Fulp and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just giving back to artists in general, like artists are like underappreciated and underpaid and all that. Especially during COVID and stuff. Yeah. Right. So that, I guess, leads to the question of were, were y'all satisfied with the jam? Were you happy with the turnout? I still haven't. I've been putting it off so I can watch them all at once. I was going to yeah. start watching them today, I think. I'm doing but it tomorrow. It, I saw I've there was a, a couple lot pages, of, though. It's yeah. Good. It's over four hours of content, just, oh, just so you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I watched the stream a little bit of the stream yesterday. I was in the, the voice chat. I was like, I wonder if anyone will see me. I was like, all right, so far, so good. <laughs> but yeah, it looked a lot of the stuff has been really cool. People are very creative. Yeah, there was definitely some cool stuff and a lot of like unique takes like i saw a lot of a lot of jokes were repeated and i didn't care because they were they were good jokes but there was like a lot of really original stuff in there it turned out so amazing uh, i mean when awesome. you can when you can sit through like over four hours of like little jelly bean men like you know you know you, <laughs> you know you got a great jam going on that's, that's what i could say that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I look forward to watching them. Yeah, looking forward. I think one really cool thing that y'all will enjoy looking at all the animations is that the topic itself sort of lends itself to, like Psycho Goldfish was saying, a lot of sort of repeated jokes. But the thing that makes each one of them so good is that the styles are all very different. So you've yeah. got some that yeah. are, you know, 3D animation, you've got claymation, you've got hyper detailed, you know, instead of just the bean men, they look, you know, virtually like real. Yeah, and uh, and then you know you've got that fun classic flash style that is, of course, very very new grounds in nature. Mm -hmm. Nice, that's cool. So, yeah, I think that's where this jam really sh really shines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, just think it's cool when you see like a, an actual astronaut like uh, spacesuit that people do because they in the game they don't look like that at all, but people just make that jump, and I think it's fun to see that. Right, yeah. right. I, I saw on Twitter the other day was the concept art for for yeah. the. Uh, <laughs> so it's funny that that is just all it is, right? And people see that as astronauts, you know. So I think that's another cool just aspect of art in general is what we're able to sort of read into things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I got like four DMs after that asking if we needed a concept artist. <laughs> <laughs> so so who do you hire? Uh, <laughs> No one. Yeah. Wow. It's done. <laughs> really shady, but <laughs> So let's talk about Newgrounds for a bit. That's that's what we are, that's why we're here. That's why we are where we are today. What's uh what's your relationships with Newgrounds? Anybody feel free to feel free to go first cuz I noticed that y'all have been on Newgrounds for for a minute. So, what's your what's your history with the site? Marcus is the one to start. Yeah, I yeah, could I probably so. go first since I think I have the strongest connection. Um I remember I joined Newgrounds in 2007, and 
my page was empty. I had that little sad picture, like your page is empty. You could put something here. And I was like, Oh, I want to put something. What could I do? And I had, um, <laughs> I had an early version of crossing the pit. It only had four choices. I was like, I could do this, but ah, oh, that's not enough choices. So I like spent a day and I added four more choices and put that up and like being able to see people responding to something you had made was just so awesome and like extremely addicting. So that really put me on the path of making more content. And then, yeah, each time I made something, more people noticed it and it just, I don't know, it was, it was awesome. I mean, you did make Henry Stickman. Yeah, but like that was nothing, like, I don't know, I made a stick figure cartoon. I wasn't expecting that to be anything. I just thought it was something fun and it just evolved over time thanks to all the feedback I got and all the attention that it got. Knowing that people would be interested in another one helped give me drive to continue to make one. Right. Anybody my, else? Yeah, my story is not quite so heartfelt. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. I just, I I think I joined Newgrounds in like 2012 or something like that. It was, it was pretty late because um, I always played on like Congregate growing up. So, but like basically Puff brought me in more or less and... And we had launched uh, Dig to China there because, like, it it was just sort of a good way for us to just have people see our stuff. I I still think that that's true. It's really cool just seeing the stuff that's on there and and you know the community that that still hangs around and keeps it alive. And then it's also for me sort of like like I've only released one game there myself. It's called Be Me, and it's honestly it's like a little bit embarrassing because it's like a period in my life where i just really got into spaghetti stories for some reason and so i was like <laughs> oh i could just make an interactive spaghetti story It'd be so funny and and then i learned how hard it is to make like a dozen jokes and have any of them be good <laughs> um <laughs> And and so I put that up, and it's like these are horrible because they're supposed to be that spaghetti stories, and <laughs> like I just feel so bad. But also it was fun. It was it was just like I spent a Christmas making a game, and it's awful, and I hate it. But it was so I don't know, just like enjoyable to to do that and have a place where people would actually see it. So does that confirm that the next big Inner Sloth game is going to be a spaghetti game? Is that what that's all? <laughs> that, that what I'm hearing? <laughs> The, uh, the next task is going to be a uh, green text. Yeah, green. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. I was hearing that the next Inner Sloth game is going to be released on Congregate. That's what I got out of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bad news. <laughs> uh, so, what about you, Amy? What brought you in with Newgrounds? Um, I mean, Puff. Puff was the one that introduced it to me. I think I found it honestly naturally back in the day when like a vinyl black sheep and stuff was a thing. Yeah. Uh, but it was like, I didn't make an account. I was purely just like lurker, like checking out the different games or the different like flash animations. But Puff was the one that pushed me to actually make an account. Cause like I was on DeviantArt. I was on these other like art hosting websites. It's like, oh, this is another one. But like, he really pushed that like the community here was really cool. And like, I remember submitting like the only art that I have on there was like a painting I did in high school. Um, but it was like, you know, curated, like they go through approval process. I remember I was like, wow, that seems really cool. Like it's really hands-on. It seems really thoughtful. I regret to say that I did not post anything further, but I definitely was lurking. I don't know why. I just like was, I just constantly lurk on um, on Newgrounds. So I do see stuff from time to time. So I work for Newgrounds and I kind of do the same thing. I just kind of lurk. <laughs> yeah. I'm like ultimate lurker. I'm just like, you don't know that I'm there, but I'm there. Um, I'm, in the, I'm in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. My experience is kind of vicariously through Puffballs. Like I've known him for a super long time and just like seeing his growth on Newgrounds and like the community and like the people that support him from Newgrounds has always been really cool to watch. And still like, I mean, Tom, Tom Fulp um, helping us or like we're able to reach out to him and he's able to help us a little bit and stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool. Right. <laughs> so, Definitely okay. That cool. brings up an interesting point there too, where both of you said that Puffballs is the reason that y'all made accounts on Newgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. So then I'm curious, how did you all meet? And if it's a separate question, how did y'all start working together? Well, so I've known I've known Amy since middle school, um, yep. but then we all went to the same college, and that's where we met Forte. And then after college, we had a moment where we were just talking. Me and Forte were talking, and we were saying like 
it'd be fun. It's fun to make games. And I was like, I can't code. I wish I could make games, but I can't code. And Forte was saying, well, I can't draw. I wish I could make games, but drawing is hard. And we're like, oh, well, that's a pretty good combination. Maybe we should team up. And so we started working on this, like, I had, I'd made a game with, like, a construct or something. I don't remember which one it was. Stencil. Stencil, because I couldn't code, and it was, like, putting pieces together. And it was a top-down, like, ghost shooter or something. And so we just jumped right into that with no planning or anything. And we spent a long time on that before we realized that it wasn't going to go anywhere good. <laughs> I kind of drifted off the question there, but <laughs> no, I think I think that's part of it, definitely. Like, so we we spent a bunch of time on that, and then we made Dig to China. And we spent a bunch of other uh, time on other things with sort of poor planning, and then we did uh, DD, which almost was a game. Um, it made it through like green light and has a. Sp- think it has a steam page still i don't actually know but i unlisted the trailer <laughs> yeah um and then that ended up not going anywhere either and then we started doing among us and then it was pretty shortly into that where we brought amy in yeah, it was before we started among us i think she's yeah. helping with deity okay yeah just a touch something something that, to that effect anyways and uh and then yeah i mean among us that's 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 mm-hmm. now essentially we were all friends we're like yo yeah. we like video games and we all have skills we can provide and just like started doing stuff yeah no what's cool about that story is like um and a lot of people don't like talking about it but you guys basically say you know you started out small doing these experiments and and some of them you know kind of failed and yeah. you, you just kept going and you can even argue that uh, when among us first launched it was kind of a small failure and that it didn't catch on right away but now it's arguably the most popular game in the world, like in this particular moment. Like, that's amazing to me. And mm-hmm. so the, the fact that you have this story where, you know, we did these, we tried these things, we failed, we tried, we failed. And then, you know, success just boom, you know, like that's that's super motivating to me because I've got a lot of failed games. <laughs> Part of the job. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think it's super important for for especially like successful game devs to talk about that stuff because like people a lot of people still characterize among us as like coming out of nowhere and then but now we're starting to get to the point where people will actually come in and correct and say like no no it's been out for two years like it's been around they just kept with it and you know sort of past that point i don't think people know i don't think enough people know about dig to china i definitely don't think enough people know about you know dd or our actual failures and like that's just as important like we're not you know this isn't our first game you have to keep with it yeah definitely and and by keeping with it like i mean a lot of people expect that they're going to make a game they're going to get it on steam or whatever and then boom they're rich and they can just do whatever they want that's that's Mm -hmm. not the case but if you're if you really love it which you guys obviously do you stick with it yeah. You know, when shit's hard, you you push through, and I mean, yeah. I'm so glad that success found you guys. Because I mean, <laughs> I, f- I mean, I've been I've been kind of following Puff since his first Henry Stickman movies and all that. Um, we mm-hmm. we actually met once at Pico Day, and we mm-hmm. talked a fair bit. I think it was before you guys started working on um, Dig the China, probably even because I think you, so. You were still talking about learning how to how to work on mobile and uh, going from Flash to mobile, and yeah, I think I don't remember who we were talking with. It was Jeff or Tom, or like, oh, you could try stencil or all that. Apparently, you did. And mm-hmm. <laughs> what workflow did you guys ultimately end up going with? I, I, among Us was Unity, correct? Yeah, it's yeah. Unity. Yeah, but all of the art's still in in, in Flash. Uh, Flash. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever know whether to call it a flash or animate now. It, it'll yeah, be all flash just forever. For PNGs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that it has that classic flash look to it. I do too. I think that's a very charming characteristic of the game, and I think it's something that a lot of people can appreciate because it obviously feels like a very polished game. Everything in it works as it's intended, right? And that's obviously it makes for good gameplay. But what I think a lot of people like about it too is that it looks like a Flash game from 2008 in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Obviously, I think a lot of the art is elevated beyond that, especially in terms of backgrounds and things like that. But the way that the characters move and interact with things, and that even the way the game feels too. I mean, when you're doing tasks when you're connecting the wires that's straight up something that could have been in a flash game you know so i think that's a that's a characteristic of it that i think makes it very charming yeah i'm glad that that it comes across that way because to me that's always felt like a limitation on my end almost i can only draw in flash i i don't know any other programs i can't do 3d so i'm just kind of going with what i know and i'm glad that 
that comes off as being charming. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people appreciate that, right? I mean, there's a lot of people playing Among Us now who are nostalgic for, for classic Flash games. So I think that gives it a good feeling, which is cool. Yeah, and Puff, yeah. you've always you've always taken the Flash thing like a notch above. Like, let's be honest, you started out making Stickman animations, which you know everybody and their dog was making them, but yours had so much character to the point where like that's not a Stickman game, that's Henry Stickman. Like, you right. saw you saw any of your games, like that's a Henry Stickman game. That's not a Stickman game, that's Henry Stickman, and th- that charm just oozes through like all your projects. So I'm I'm glad you've kind of kept with that style because I. Fucking love it. Thanks. <laughs> It'd be awesome to revitalize the like Flash style. That'd be that'd be like job well done. Yeah, like Flash is dead. Long live Flash. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so one thing I, I really noticed with Among Us is that it really felt like it had um, a primarily mobile design. Like when you guys made it, were yeah. you targeting mobile originally and and purely mobile? Was that the plan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the original release was mobile only, local only. There was no online. You had to play with your friends. You had to connect to the same Wi-Fi router in order to get all the information across. And people had a lot of trouble playing the game at all. Yeah, yeah. Number one comment was, I have no friends, but I want to play this. <laughs> and yeah, so, what's interesting about that is, um, so you guys went on to add the multiplayer and all that. Um mm-hmm. But back when you first launched, like things like Discord and stuff, they weren't really that big. Like, if you wanted to video chat with somebody, you're still using Skype for the most part, or maybe Facebook Messenger. How do you guys feel like um, COVID in particular might have impacted how this game boomed? Because now when we want to like hang out, we're pretty much all on Zoom or Discord or something like that. And Among Us is the perfect game to play on there. Like, do you, do you think that had a huge impact? I, I know the streamers picking it up had a big impact. But do you think COVID might have had a, a additional large boost to it? Yeah, yeah. I definitely. I definitely think it was a factor. Like, I mean, we definitely were not a failure before COVID like really came in. Um, but like the timing, I mean, the timing is just like, there's no way it was a coincidence. Like, like it, we definitely saw a lot more people like playing the game, you know, before or after the beginning of the year than before the beginning of the year. Like that's, that's not, that's no coincidence. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be popular no matter what. Like, the streamers playing it, it you could tell how fun it was. But yeah. now now everybody's stuck at home and communicating online. It's like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna get in on that fun because i got nothing else to do. Yeah, it's, it's hard to split out, like, theoretically, who would not play because they are not inside versus who would play it regardless of if they were locked inside or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, but it's just definitely like- a game I'd love to play in real life with friends, but I'm, I'm, yeah. on, I'm on that same group where I don't have enough real life friends to, to get it going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That actually made play testing really hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You just go, go stand in front of home Depot. And like, hey, you want to, <laughs> we, we had enough friends to like get a group. I think we had like up to six eight. or seven. We, yeah, we play with eight. Yeah, up to eight people. So we never ever tested nine and ten, and we we only had like theoretical knowledge of that. But but we would like schedule this out like weeks in advance so that we could get all eight people together, and then the the game would be like horribly broken immediately <laughs> upon them arriving, and I'd be scrambling on my computer to get them new builds through Google Play and shit. And it, was, it was really really frustrating and painful. The whole time people are shouting new bugs. They find like, look, uh, this this. A is very too close to the letter C when you type this combination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Forte's like, I don't give a shit. I need to make sure the game doesn't instantly crash for half of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're just trying to help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it was extremely helpful. We love our Good friends. memories. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you guys mentioned um, online a couple weeks ago now that you've decided to cancel uh, Among Us 2 in favor of basically bringing all those ideas into Among Us 1. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting choice because I remember when you were talking about Among Us 2 originally, it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to work on that damn code base anymore. Uh, what changed yeah. your mind to go back to that <laughs> code base? It basically, like, it was like one part, like, if we do this, I think that we can get stuff to people faster. And then, you know, with all of the people coming in, there's enough money where we can actually say like, hey, we can actually get help now. It doesn't have to just be three people. And we're still figuring that bit out. That's really hard because we 
like you can't just accept anybody to to work on Among Us. Like it has to actually right. be really good. And so we're still sort of figuring that out. But but yeah, it's basically just like the doors opened and we want to be able to give back. We want to be able to keep it going. And so we figured that that was probably the the quickest route. Yeah, and there's also something to be said about being able to work on a game that everyone is excited about in the moment instead of like, oh, you guys are excited about this? Just wait until you see what we got in eight months. You'll be yeah. <laughs> blown right. away. So are you guys yeah. looking at doing like um, your updates of steps, like rather than just throwing all of this Among Us co- content or Among Us 2 content into one big update, you're looking at maybe like deploying it in steps? Yeah, definitely. For yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, we've already started to do that. Like, it, we're super duper busy now, so it's really hard to get things in the game. But like whenever I can pull out like a tiny piece, like um, the previous update, we added um, not confirming uh, imposters when you eject them. And great, people great love option, that. by the way. Great option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tons of people use that now. And mm-hmm. um, this so the current beta, which I hope will go out next week, um, has anonymous votes, so you can't see who's voting, as well as Ooh. taskbar updates. Because a lot of people are complaining about um, using tasks to confirm crewmates by watching the taskbar. So right. added a couple more options in there, and just we're gonna keep doing that. And then probably, you know, we've already announced a new map, so that'll come out. It's one of the going to be one of the bigger ones that'll take longer we, we've announced uh more players we're gonna probably get up to 15 that's the goal maybe 12 if it doesn't work out i don't know but, oh, nice. but yeah so we have some like medium size and big size ones and we're just going to kind of roll them out as we can get them done really cool really cool you guys had uh, probably uh one of the most well-known issues was getting your servers in line with once all the people started playing it that you weren't really expecting the big boom. How fun yeah. was that to do? <laughs> uh. Uh, I don't know. Is working 14 hours a day, seven days a week fun? Um, oh, yeah. So fun. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's basically it. Things, yeah, things are really good and they got really, they got, well, they're not really good, but they're a lot better. I don't have to work 14 hours a day. Um, <laughs> Dude, just do. uh, buy more servers. I know. God. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the that was the like worst part of it is like people who think they're helping. Sorry, you're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want this. Yeah, because um, it's it was it was never that simple. Otherwise, I would have just done it. Right. Right. You right. To, you have to take that step and be like, ah. Not, no, dude, you game. just you just type code dumb. and fix it. That's all you do. You just type. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it off and on. Yeah. Did, did you unplug it and plug it back in? <laughs> no. There was like a meme going around of like all the different like game servers around the world for other, like Xbox or PlayStation. And then there was one for Inner Sloth. And it's just like the server that's on fire with like a billion fans like blowing at it. It's, like, yeah. It, it, it the seems desktop with yeah, a desk fan blowing into it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's rough, but funny at the same time. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I like this one. Like, that's actually how it is. But yeah. So did yeah. you code your uh, did you code your backend server like from scratch, or were you using an existing yep. framework? Yeah, yeah, no, it's totally, totally from scratch. Because like my big thing when I started doing, well, I I guess two big things when I started doing the online support for Among Us. First thing is horrible control freak. I want to know exactly what the the like net code is doing and so like you can't use like photon or or anything like that because they're not going to tell you what it's doing and so i i gravitated towards like really open source super simple libraries and the other thing was um we started out on like a free amazon tier uh it was you know they're literally like the worst servers that you can get um (laughs) They only let you use like 10% of the CPU or they start charging you extra and you only get like one gig of bandwidth or they start charging you extra and just all that crap. And so, but like that was all part of keeping it really, really cheap so that we could just run it forever. And, you know, we outgrew that, but luckily we outgrew it at the same time that, you know, people actually started paying for the game. And so it's always been really, really inexpensive to scale the game and, at the cost of, I have to work so hard. <laughs> like every time a new wave of players comes in, everything just burns to the ground, and I have to rebuild it back up. So, <laughs> oh. 
that's uh, just kind of how it's been. But those are my like big things. Well, we appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have been so tolerant. It's amazing. Like, like I'm, I am always working. I see the problems. I'm always working. But at the same time, I'm like, I could let this go for a few more hours and just, you know, if I need it to, and you'll, you'll still be here. And I'm like, just so thankful for that. Mm-hmm. Like, no one just straight up walks away. And that's just so great. Well, it's cool. You're, you're getting it all fixed. Like you're, you're like the one man programmer. Like that's insane that you're, you're not only supporting updates to the game code, but you're keeping a, a service running. Like that is so impressive to me. I, I cannot stress how difficult that is to people who don't know anything about maintaining a service, but it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sort of curious here. Amy, you had said earlier, you know, we love the fans, right? And then and then there's been a little bit of talk about people who, you know, think they're helping but are not necessarily helping. And my mm-hmm. question is, has interacting with the public been an unexpected side job essentially to to the main job of game creation or or did you always kind of expect that? I guess kind of expected it because when we were working on Among Us, like we created a Discord server. So we're like, okay, we want to actually, you know, talk to the people who played the game, be able to get feedback because it's like, like, sure, we had friends to test for us, but it was up to eight people. Now there's, you know, many, many more than that helping us give, give us feedback and stuff. The fan interaction now is kind of insane. Like, it's, I'm still getting used to it. Like, it's so people much. Tweet, yeah, people, mm-hmm. any any social pu- any public social just like constantly sending oh yeah sending us ideas which a lot of them are super cool but it's like you know hey that's kind of our job like we want a chance to at least <laughs> come up with some ideas the ones the ones that really like i'm like oh my gosh i really want these in the game but also like it's just kind of that weird we didn't come up with it but like the cosmetic ideas oh my gosh like a lot of the ones that i've been seeing are so good and just like oh well if I put this in, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, they, they put my idea in," but it's like, no, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> right. Just you don't want everybody wants their idea. Yeah, it's such a fine line, and like yeah. I mean, we definitely appreciate. Like our, I think the the people who have reached out in support of us, it's just been super great, and especially during like quarantine where we're not interacting with people, and all of these people from around the world coming in and help, like sending us good thoughts and stuff, has been really nice. Um, there's definitely been some stressful moments, but we're, I'm looking at the good and it's been really good so far. Yeah. 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 I can't imagine dealing with, I mean, there's obviously all of the, and I say dealing with, and I feel like that's the, the wrong terminology. I just, I can't imagine getting that many messages on Twitter and that, you know, that many tweets. Oh. Are, I mean, so Psycho Goldfish and I tried to join the Among Us Discord <laughs> server today and it's full. There are yeah. s- been full for like that. weeks and like we we've been in contact with discord themselves and they're like you know when you're ready we can open it back up and we could easily become the the biggest discord ever uh, but insane. i'm trying to find i'm trying to find moderators because that it it needs moderation but like because oh, yeah. of everything else that's going on like i just haven't i'm doing like four people's full-time jobs right now yeah uh handling mm-hmm. merchant like i've got a merch team i'm doing socials but we're trying to find like a community manager discord is its own big thing and i'm doing that and like the moderators that we do currently have have been super great helping me and helping do what they can with like a bunch of people and then someday doing back going back to dev um which i'm looking forward yeah. to mm-hmm. but yeah it's it's bonkers we're, we're doing what we can but it definitely just takes time and patience <laughs> did you guys ever expect this much administration to pop up did you- no no. Yeah. <laughs> or at least not this fast like yeah i i don't know I, I i never imagined to get this big this fast i thought we could just cruise at our own pace and just slowly build up a following but this is just like an explosion yeah well maybe maybe if you made a shittier game yeah <laughs> you're right. try that. Next, yeah. next time i <laughs> God, i it, <laughs> I don't know what it is about Newgrounds. Me and Newgrounds, every time I think about, oh, yeah, I could put a new game on Newgrounds, it ends up being like this horrible idea. <laughs> like I'm just just conjuring my my inner filth into a game form. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to make way. I really want to make the ultimate loot box game where it's like loot boxes that have more loot boxes in them and you buy them and you get more loot boxes. <laughs> and you have to wait to open them, but that like, also <laughs> like cost loot boxes or something like just put that up there. 
You can trade loot boxes <laughs> for other loot boxes. I don't know. <laughs> just find the the worst the worst gimmicks in gaming history and just put them all in one bu- one game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like just on that note, I think the worst thing that I regularly experience in games is when you have to follow an NPC and their walk <laughs> speed is faster than your walk speed but slower than your run speed. Yeah. And I'd like a game that's just that. <laughs> like you just have to follow somebody but you can never match their speed. Oh my God. <laughs> walking game. Uh, I like it. I, I can like see it now. Like <laughs> pixel art too. I don't know. I'm stylizing it in such a way. Uh huh. Yeah. Except the thing that you're following is a loot box. I'm going to see this tomorrow somewhere. And you, you can't open it until yeah. it gets to the other side of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So I have another question about community interactions, and this is also based on something that Amy had said earlier, but anybody, please feel free to chime in here. What do y'all think about the way that <laughs> that Among Us has influenced internet language? So obviously, obviously the word sus existed before, but I think it's taken on an entirely new meaning in the world of, you know, post Among Us explosion. Have y'all noticed that? I mean, I'm sure you have, oh, right? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I, have, I mean, I get like... Uh, Facebook messages being like, oh man, like your game is so sus. I'm like, what? <laughs> I gotta look up what this sus is. And like, I mean, I, we're in the we're in the day and age where people love to like abbreviate, like to abbreviate, abbreviate words. Abbreviate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a thing, right? That's it's still a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy seeing like like brands even use the word sus or just like. Right. Like people, I mean, everyone's trying to hop on the bandwagon now. Yeah, mm-hmm. people immediately know what it references, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna vote them out." And like the com, like that post does so well um, in terms of comments and going viral and stuff. Um, right. Yeah. It's it's kind of interesting to see like the vultures come out and they see a big meaty pie that they want a piece of, mm-hmm. and we just we get bombarded with messages and like, it's hard to, it's hard to split out the sincere from the like money people. <laughs> say that again. Right. Money. Money. I was just going to say, I'm sure you've also seen a lot of like counterfeit merch too. People just straight oh, yeah. up stealing your stuff to yeah. make, a, make a quick buck too. Oh yeah. And that's, that's something that I'm currently dealing with my merch team. Cause like we, we ended up releasing just like, a statement where it's like, hey, like no no businesses should be selling among us stuff. Um it's I feel like I need to phrase this super correctly because I will be quoted on it. Um uh, but like we did put out a fan art policy recently. Um I'm currently working with Dual Wheel Studios, which is just cu- uh, local to where we are near Seattle. And they've been a great help just like helping me like like they know the language, they know what to do and I'm like, I have an idea, make this a reality. Like help me just like take this crazy thing and be able to direct people. But I know there's like, there's a lot of fans that are also making fan merch and a lot of it's been super cool. Um, And we're just like, Hey, like for now, like, please just like, don't sell it. Like give us a chance to come up with some, something official. Just, yeah. Um, But I know like there's definitely some huge websites or companies that are just like pumping out among us merch. We're like, no, we like, we, you haven't come to us like you haven't we haven't said yes or they have and like we we said no and they're still doing it it's it's a it's a weird fight to be in but we're 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 doing what we can right yeah are you guys gonna have um some official merch uh, in time for the holiday season this year like i would merch. love a i would love a, a plushie with like one of the spacemen and the, the little kid spaceman <laughs> i know people i so i'm trying my darndest to do plushies um where because we did we did do plushies i released I think it was like less than 300 of them. They did sell, sell out, um, but that was before the like immense wave of people wanting merch. So I was like, oh, just like happened to release too soon. But we're, we're trying to make more of those. We're trying to make more colors of them. Um, it does take time, like especially during COVID, right before holidays when everyone yeah. and their mom is making merch, um, like developing more like new product is just takes time. So if I think if anything, I don't think this is a promise, but if anything, like we would definitely have pre-orders and just be like, hey, this is something we're working on. Buy it. Do the old old Star Wars thing where you send them a cardboard to give to their kid. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't remember that, but that does Uh, sound like it sounds like a 90 thing. 90s thing. Oh, no, that was a 70s thing. The original Star Wars toys. (laughs) 
They didn't. They didn't have the original toys on time for Christmas, so they sent a cardboard of "Here's what you're gonna get." <laughs> That's kind of cute, honestly. I don't know. <laughs> it made a lot of money, so there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're we're trying we're trying super hard. I know we're trying to we're trying to make things that can be produced quickly, but still like be the qual like have good quality and stuff. Oh man, someone just posted in the Discord purple spaceman costume. We did. It's not for holiday, but we do love the idea of doing like an inflatable uh, crewmate costume, like the the dinosaur and the oh yeah, like those like T Rex suits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someday, someday, someday. Or for holiday, probably not. But like, yeah. Long story oh, you got, short, you got a couple weeks. You can bang it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're trying. <laughs> So I do want to ask one more thing when it comes to community interaction and the way that the internet has taken to, I guess, Among Us lingo. And that's, of course, just the memes. Obviously, there was one referenced earlier about the Intersloth servers being on fire and all the fans and everything. What are, their, uh, what are, what are some of your favorite Among Us memes that you've seen? Oh, there's, I like the, uh, so the dancing one. I don't know the name of the song, but it's like the guy it's, who's like dancing and he's doing the tasks. It's the Colored Greens one. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's my favorite one. Yeah, that oh, one's yeah. really good. The simplest, best one I've seen so far is just the chickens looking at the <gasps> um, the the red sprinkler uh, faucet yes, or whatever, that. That. and then the um, the imposter sound goes off. Oh my god! Yeah, because so I've seen that <laughs> I've seen that chicken meme before, but then the addition of the like music, yeah, just takes it to a whole different level. I'm like opening. Uh, oh my gosh! I'm opening Twitter. But yeah, there's Just so like there's so 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 many. It's it's extremely hard to choose. <laughs> the one that immediately comes to mind because we were talking earlier about like how people are drawing them like little little you know jelly beans all the way up to like straight up like intense realistic space men. There was right. one like that where this guy's like getting ready for work. He's like putting on his helmet and then he smacks on like a a flamingo hat and then like turns into bean form. He's like going to work. <laughs> he's so, yeah. he so cute. That, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the, there's one that I'm looking at right now. It's the like the ladies yelling at the cat that's like in front of the salad, but it's yeah. like two two crewmates like accusing someone, and then there's just like red trying to scan a card or something. <laughs> there's, there's there's so many. We could be we that could be a different podcast altogether. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the meme episode. Inner I'm glad that you brought video. up the card the card scan <laughs> task because I think that was the most common reference made in the. Uh, yeah. animation yeah. <laughs> yeah just lots of <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not working <laughs> that that task is so funny be- to me because i was the one i like designed the mechanics of it and like the like rejection rate and stuff and i originally <laughs> had it where it was even harder and people were like yeah. no please don't please don't do that <laughs> it, there was mm-hmm. there was like a, a random like 30 percent fail rate where it would like the bad scan the bad scan was originally just a flat like 30 percent of the time it just doesn't work <laughs> um, and i changed it to be like okay you're actually like kind of doing it wrong you can't start from the middle and and slide across that's why it says bad read now right Interesting. <clears throat> i just i just remember like coming up with that task because this game was originally designed for mobile and i'm like this one that the the card task was one of the most fun for me doing on mobile but mm-hmm. I do remember like us testing it. It was like just you had to go this just very specific speed for it to <laughs> even register. If it go just too fast, just like nope. That and Simon says too. I remember yeah. like I'd be going oh, too like fast Simon and I'll says. accidentally like tap a different button and have to start over. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> every time. Yeah, that one that one stresses me out even when I'm like in free play. <laughs> yeah. That that's probably the only one at this point that I'd be like, yeah, I could actually make it easier if it were only four instead of five or whatever. <laughs> that that would probably be a change that I would consider making. But at this oh, point, I, I've lost just, my shit so much on that one. <laughs> like you get down to like the last button, and you're about to hit the last one on the fifth one, and somebody calls an emergency meeting. Oh, yeah. oh! I mean that one. <laughs> that one also originally did not save your progress. So now if if, if an emergency is called, it should actually replay the pattern so that you can complete it from where you left off. But originally it did not. Yeah, that's got me yeah. too, though. Because then you go back and it's like five. Oh, shit. I for- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which one was it? Long time. I thought you were expected to remember and you just have to run all the way back. To, okay, what was it again? Yeah. 
I was going to say the worst thing that's ever happened to me in a game of Among Us is I was doing the upload, you know, task. And it yeah. was, I swear, one second away from being completed. And then I was killed. And now I'm a ghost and I still got to do my task. So I got to sit <laughs> through the entire upload process again. Super fun. Very and then cool. someone finds your body at one second left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one other thing we want to talk about, um, Newgrounds is like a huge art community and a huge music and sound community. So I kind of wanted to get into um, the inspiration behind um, both like the art and the backgrounds and stuff like that. And the sound, like this, the sound is just so underrated in this game. Oh, thanks. Um, so what was, what I... was the big inspirations for the, the style of like the, the background art and the sound design? I guess I'll start with the sound since we were talking about it. Um, I've never really done sound design before, so I kind of just did what I could. The um, the main menu song was actually written when I was really depressed. So I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm having a lot of trouble just writing music in general. So I just banged something out. I was like, ah, it's, I don't know. It's it's fine. And I think the, the team was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's been like, it's become kind of iconic, which I have mixed feelings about, but still. It works. Uh, and then... Um, but in terms oh. of the sound effects and stuff, sorry, Dick. No, no, that's where I was headed. Uh, in terms of the sound effects and stuff, I just, I've bought in like a bunch of sound packs to build up my sound effects library over the years. And it was just mixing that together. Yeah. I don't, oh. I don't know. Well, I, I think that there was a sense of like, we've or at least I've played a bunch of games that do like really cool dynamic sounds where like, mm. um, you know, you're moving from one area to another and it just does these like really beautiful crossfades and, and overlays, you know, when things get intense and stuff like that. And that's stuff that I've always wanted to program or like just have more of in our games. And so like I sort of pushed, pushed, Marcus to do like more of that because um, I just think it's really, really cool. Yeah, that's true. Um, another interesting thing I just re remembered, the original game had no sounds yeah, because I was about to chime in if for you're that. sitting local, it gives everything away where you are, what you're doing. Right. So once we were porting to PC, we're like, oh yeah, we have to add sound effects. That's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, we were, a we were able to basically release a game with no sound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then we're like, oh, if you're not playing locally, we can do sound, which, you know. Right. Like, yeah. Not sure I was going with that, but yeah. You know, what's cool is, so when we watched the animation jam the other day, like I said, it's over four hours. Everybody basically sampled the, the background music and the ambience and the sounds. And four hours of that, it never got old. Like, that's a testament. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. definitely, like, a design goal of ours is, like, just make it make it interesting and make it dynamic. and But also, like, make it sort of unobtrusive. Or, like, yeah, you have to be able to listen to any part of this for hours and hours and hours. Because it's, it's so easy for things to become grating. Yeah, definitely. And then back to the art question, like, what was the big inspiration mm -hmm. on the, the backgrounds and the scenes and, like, the levels and all that? Like, you have, like, the three different themes, you know, you've got the, the ship and the base and all that. Like, what were the what were the inspirations for those scenes and everything in them? Like, there's so many little cool sci-fi rooms. I just love it. Man, it's it's hard for me to think all the way back to the design of Skeld because I was juggling Henry at the same time. So I think I, I took a month off of Henry to, to draw the Skeld, uh, which is the, the spaceship map. For those that haven't played it. Yeah. And I think I just used like uh, Google Images and just typed in like blank, like reactor room and look for little little details that point out what makes this a reactor room. And I tried to like draw from that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think there's, I th think the, the basic progression was like, the first one is like, it's a ship, space. Okay, cool. That's, that's the theme. <laughs> like we knew it was going to be space and... I don't remember how we decided it was going to be space, but we we just knew. Yeah, I don't remember either. It just happened. Yeah, and so um, that just happened, and we sort of built the that map more like naturally than the others. I think we're like you know we were just putting putting rooms onto each other and just like making sure that it was like interesting to play in, and so there was no art for a long time as we were you know playing it and and adding art and then yeah because we had no basis for balance so we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants yeah hoping it worked out yeah and so you, we sort of just built the ship around what the rooms were and then and then mira was like every everybody was like 
we want Mars, we want Mars, we want the moon. And we're like, eh, we're not doing that. Like, it's just, we don't necessarily like the obvious choices. And so that's where we started to sort of kind of build up internal lore where it was like, why are these people, why are the crewmates and what are they doing? And like, what is it? And so we do have a tiny bit of lore that people just salivate over. Oh my God, people love lore so much. <laughs> and um, is basically like, yeah, Mira is like this excavation, you know, surveying, prospecting company. And so an office, just put it in an office and make that office, you know, on like sort of coruscant like cloud city sort of deal super size skyscraper and and that's basically it and then at that point we'd already had a bunch of like memes uh within like the discord crew of like you know bathrooms and what do they eat and you know all of this stuff too so we started mundane to, stuff yeah we st- started to pull some of that in there and there's a lot of like you know what do they drink they drink out of vending machines and all that stuff and then <laughs> then we sort of you know we sort of started to come back to the like okay mars moon how are we going to make mars and moon ours and so you end up with this like purple ice lava planet and we also knew that we wanted like a more open stage because both of the previous two were pretty pretty closed in um and so it just happened yeah yeah touching a bit more on on the planet map everyone was asking for quote-unquote red planet and like that's such an easy grab yeah so i I don't know why necessarily. I, I settled on purple because it looked cool. And then we had a snowstorm like during that part of development. And I was like, ooh, it'd be cool to have snow. But <laughs> I didn't want it to be all snow because that's boring. So it was snow. And then it'd be cool to have the dichotomy of snow and lava. And that's kind of where that, that came from. Yeah. And I, I think we also, I think we also, do, I don't know. I think that we lined up accidentally really well with Avengers as well, which was like, bonus this is really weird oh yeah we we had to we had to like ban event avengers talk for a while when it first came out oh my god (laughs) spoilers in our discord yeah our poor moderators like i really want to watch this movie but i will i will watch the server for spoilers for you like yeah godspeed nice Uh, i don't know i'm thinking i'm thinking back to like because I, I worked on Mira, um, and I like really I don't really have background in drawing, I guess, what Mira was. But a lot of the inspiration was, I think before as I mentioned, just like Cloud City, just like tall skyscraper. It almost was like an underwater map. I just liked the idea of like, this is just like a building in like a vast area. But yeah, it was just a lot of a lot of like looking on Google, like space theme, game, space movie, just like all of those types of keywords, um, just trying to draw reference from anything I could and also looking for like interesting rooms. Cause I know like there's a cafeteria in there. I just like went on Pinterest was like cool cafeteria tiles and <laughs> like trying to, I don't know, just like that was one thing I think was my struggle was trying to come up with cool floor textures. It's like, oh yeah, I could just make it this yeah. flat color, but flat does not look interesting. And then like making it a tile because we were doing it in flash. Like there probably is a better way to do this, but I was just like copy, copy and pasting groups and then like flattening in. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> I think my, final, my fondest memory was like basically going either Mira becoming uh, this huge skyscraper in the clouds or it becoming an underwater map. So it's like in the future, I'm not saying we are going to, <laughs> but I love the idea of something underwater, like. There's so many cool map ideas that we'd like to do that can provide lore without being like, like, hey, this is like, we don't, I don't know, we don't like super concrete lore. Like, we want people to still be able to come up with their own stories and interpret, you know, the the things from Among Us their own way. Right. Yeah. But see, what, see what what they were saying before is the obvious ones are too too obvious. So I, I think instead of water, you guys are going to end up with what green Jello or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. Flubber planet. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of brings me back to a question I was going to ask. Um, you guys are currently in the process of designing a new map. With the years the game's been out and understanding the balance, has that made it easier to make new maps? Or is it still challenging to just kind of figure, is this going to work? Is this going to work? No. It's kind of weird because I feel like it makes me overthink even more. But I hope that we're getting better each time. Yeah. It's hard to say. The, the other thing is... We don't have a good pipeline for testing the maps. They kind of just get put in <laughs> like from the start. <laughs> you'll take it and you'll like it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know. It, it still feels very like 
just trying stuff out. We're just iterating as fast as we can and, and just trying things out and changing it and tweaking it. That's actually cool because it's, it's almost like there could be so much pressure from the popularity of the game that you yeah. might find yourself not able to decide what is and is not a good idea. But it's but it goes back to what we were saying before about you know just sticking with it and then yeah you, know, I have you, to you make gotta sure I love. tune it out a little bit yeah yeah sorry I kind of interrupted I don't know what, sorry. no I interrupted you sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just saying I kind of have to you kind of have to tune out like the loud voices and like still trust your gut because that's what got us yeah. where we are so. We have, we have to have confidence in ourselves. Yeah. Right. And that can definitely waver when there's a lot of people shouting a lot of different ideas at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when they're really good and you're like, ooh. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or the ones that seem really good at first. And then the more yeah. that you think about it, the worse it gets. Those are the, those <laughs> yeah. are the hardest ones. That's my life yeah. in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's anyone's life. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, <laughs> famous last words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, so, well, speaking of sticking with it, uh, let's talk about Henry Stickman <laughs> a little bit. Um, you guys just launched the Henry Stickman collection on Steam. How's that been going? It went really well. Yeah. And it was a very big relief to be done with it. <laughs> it took three years straight for yeah, my God. Balls. How old is that franchise now? No, it's been a while. It's been 10 years plus. I think Breaking the Bank came out in 2008. Man, that's crazy. It doesn't seem that long ago to me, but you know, I know. Mm-hmm. Reception's been pretty <laughs> pretty good for yeah. That's it. The, the reception's been pretty good for it yeah. so far. It's got I think yeah I think it has like ninety nine percent positive reviews on on Steam. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the, which is like crazy to me. Well, I mean, it's it's they're fun. Like I've always loved the the narrative where you, you just try things and and get funny results. Like even when you lose. It's great. It's yeah. hilarious. And I've always loved the comedy. Uh, to the point where losing sometimes more fun than winning. And then you gotta find yeah, you gotta find every idea. every branch. You wanna see every branch. And you've got so many episodes that I mean it's it's definitely worth buying on Steam and you should all do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's sort of the same thing that I was saying before too with nostalgia for flash content. Especially now, I mean this year with you know the flash player being killed off, it's like people I think a lot of people, especially those of us who, you know, have have been on new grounds for a long time or or were on new grounds back in the day, it's cool to see that content again. So yeah, yeah, and I, I guess I would hope that people can, if they people have followed it and they can see the trajectory of where it ended up, that it would inspire people to to follow their dreams too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see growth. Like. A lot of a lot of people kind of stick to one thing and don't necessarily change a lot, but you can see the growth from you know the first one all the way up to the last one, and you can see how a lot of that actually inspired among us as well. It's really really inspiring. Yeah, that's awesome. So now that we've given equal time to among us <laughs> and the Henry Stickman collection, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I figure before we before we wind this down, um, I've seen a couple interesting uh, questions come up in the chat, uh, just from people listening in. So here's a question for you all: What color do you play? Mm, we can Whoever says purple is the imposter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a flex main. I kind of yeah. play whatever. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. I mean, I I like cyan and lime a lot. For no particular reason, really. But those were the two that were added later. So maybe that's something. Cyan and lime have the advantage of being able to confuse people when somebody says green. Uh huh. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean that green, green not, or blue? Not me, green. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, it's true. It, it is interesting. Yeah, the number of people who call cyan and lime uh, light, light blue or light green instead. Right. Yeah. They have names. Come on. <laughs> I remember when the color f- or those two colors first came out. That was like people were complaining to us, like, "Why did you add these?" People keep yeah. saying green, and I get voted out because they were lime. Yeah, I'm like, and well, that's why we I- added it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a feature, oh. not a bug. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I when I guess when I do get to play, or if I actually have a chance of getting the colors I want, I usually try to go for yellow, cyan, or black. But I'm happy with any of the colors. Yeah. See, I like to play by making my name a color. People get pissed off when I do it. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I love that. <laughs> oh. uh, Zin Zinix especially gets mad. He's like, 
No, it was fucking green. With not not the green color. The guy named Green. <laughs> Fuck. <It's... laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. So here's another question from the audience. Uh, imposter in Smash One. Oh man, that'd be so, that'd be so <laughs> right? cool. Somebody hit, hook knife. us up with. Somebody hook up us, us up with N- Nintendo. Sakurai. Yeah, Reggie Nintendo. There was someone. Someone did make a. Uh, I think it was Rivals of Aether. Uh, mod for the crewmate. Really cool, yeah. It was, yeah, it was really awesome. So if we got an imposter in Smash, what what's its move set? Uh. See, I think that's really hard to a- answer because I've seen the um the Rivals of Aether set, uh, like move set, and it's so good. And I'd be like, oh, I yeah. don't want to just straight rip that off, but also it's so good. They had like um like a set a set event and then teleport back to it like recover down b would be so good that's so awesome like and then you know i don't know a bunch of other stuff but like that was the like key move that i was like yeah that in that needs to be yeah like i know the for- tongue kill in there yeah, yeah tongue stab yeah there was one with like a um what's it called a sweet spot a sweet spot tongue kill or tongue stab that was really good mokuzai has a question about henry stickman in the game's canon is the game talking or is it you i don't know if that's ever what? clarified I mean, I guess f- from the unofficial perspective, it's always been me. It's I actually, when I was first making them, I tried to make sure I never said I, but then I forgot about that rule. And so <laughs> uh, that kind of fell apart. But it's I, I guess it's me. I don't know. I've, I've got one. What What was your go-to delivery food while you guys were crunching on this? Oh my god! <laughs> go-to delivery food. I well, think- we're definitely we're definitely doing more delivery food now versus before yeah i think at the time it was probably thai food yeah uh, lately for me it's been panda express nothing but yeah, the I'm finest good. all right <laughs> uh, it's good i feel like Cadoba. Huh. just like easy easy foods to yeah. eat but now i really want thai food that sounds really good <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna end this show with everybody being hungry uh-huh. that's me on a daily basis <laughs> well i would hope you were hungry at least once a day <laughs> yeah. oh death I'm hungry eight times a day. <laughs> I eat 17 us. meals. All right. So here's a, you... Oh, sorry. If you have more to say, go ahead. Just, just one more. No, I was reading the question. Someone was asking if Among Us had a name before Among Us. Ooh. I remember us sitting down. We, I don't remember how many meetings it took, if it was just the one, but we spent a while trying to decide on the name. Mm-hmm. We basically just brainstormed it. I don't think we had anything before Among Us necessarily. Space Mafia. Yeah, the, yeah. The development name was Space Game or Space Mafia. Was the like tentative title? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you can you can you can still see it in uh, Google Play because the Google Play version was the first version. And when you set the like package name, you can't change it. And we didn't have a name for the game yet, so it ended up being like you can see it in the um, if you open up Google Play in a browser, you can see that the package name has Space Mafia in it. But like other platforms came after we had decided the name of the game, so they all end up end up having like package names of of Among Us. I feel like there must be like at least a few more, right? It wasn't just straight from Space Game, Space Mafia to Among Us. That's like kind of a leap, right? There's no no yeah. in between. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a whole like uh, brainstorming process. I don't remember if we settled on anything. I remember kind of trying to guide us like I want it to feel like something about you have someone in your group that's trying to betray you. We can go off of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a decent chance it, it, it like came out of like imposter among us or at the time originally it was the imposters were going to be called infected. So it, it probably came out of like infected among us or there's there's someone among us or there's yeah, like an, there's an imposter or, you know, something along those lines. So but, you never once thought of just calling it sus? No. <laughs> no. That's like, a modern thing. The, yeah, all of the, like, the weird thing to us is, like, we didn't really come up with very much terminology. I mean, like, emergency meeting is, like, the only thing that I, I feel like we came up with. But that's just called buttoning now. And then, yeah, yeah. And, and so it, what really? it, from our perspective, like, this is other things coming in and we're not actually in control or like it's not like um it's not an among us thing it's an internet thing coming into among us and and seeing how like all of those perspectives has changed among us is really weird (laughs) yeah out of the three of you who's the best imposter 
Oh. In other words, who's the most Man. sus? <laughs> <laughs> it's either Forest or yeah, Forte or Puff. It might I'm awful. <laughs> actually be me. I think it I is. I think it might actually be me. Mostly because I, I'm just better under stress. And he doesn't draw attention to himself. Yeah. I thought for sure I'd be a great imposter because we used to play other party games that involve a lot of bullshitting. Mm-hmm. And and I, I'd, win, I'd win them quite often, but it turned out to be a, a pain for me because now nobody trusts me because they know I'm so good at bullshitting. <laughs> so. Oh my god. It's a double-edged sword. It is. It's, it's a tough responsibility. <laughs> I'm just super non-confrontational. So if, if, when I'm an imposter, I'm like hiding in the vent or like just can't bring myself to kill or <laughs> drink cat. You can usually tell yeah. when she's the imposter because nothing has happened for the first half of the game. <laughs> <laughs> there was a- that's all, that was, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've played because I just haven't had time. But yeah. yeah. There was a cartoon like, oh. in the jam that sounds like that. The purple just <laughs> didn't have the guts to kill anybody and everybody else is just blaming everybody. And at the end, she's like, I don't have the guts to kill anybody. I'll just end it now. And she turns around and everybody's floating in space already. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish that's how games win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you guys have a favorite task? Ooh, favorite task. Well, let's ask the room what your favorite task is and we'll read some of them. Um, for me... Oh, yes. I don't know. It, it's like I love the feel just, of the the card one just because content. I've I've experienced the card in real life so many fucking times that it feels real. <laughs> like fuck you, grocery store POS. <laughs> like asteroids couple. Yeah, yeah emergency the, uh, the, They need to upgrade their cards to chips so you can just put it in there. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's what not, that's a when, when, when are we getting NFC codes in Among Us so we can just hold our phones up to that goddamn thing? Yeah, oh, <laughs> it's a five dollar five dollar deal. There you go. <laughs> well, so this is a pay to win. Pay, game. pay to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm seeing. Oh man. Anything except the maze one. Yeah, yeah. I maze. love the maze one, but I think it's because I like. It's painful on mobile. Yeah, it yeah. Is it's kind of hard. I've made the hitbox on the the um button for it like bigger a couple of times probably need to do it again yeah it's not so bad on an ipad but on a phone it's rough but yeah yeah mm. but that's part of it though because you get stressed out like, i get in it get, 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 and then you get killed <laughs> yeah it's it's the polis card swipe yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've definitely seen youtube compilations of people failing at tasks and it's hilarious <laughs> i mean that, that's oh, part of the fun someone get to the end of simon says three times <laughs> <laughs> Like it, it, it wouldn't have the same level of stress. I don't think if it didn't have the same fail rate. Like, like you just get them done. Like I find the wires they're cool because you have to go around and do them, but you can uh, do them so yeah. fast and you don't worry as much. But when you get stuck in one of those longer high fail rate games, you're like <laughs> you got to get the return. And that was one of the yeah. that's one of the running gags in the animation jam. There's just so many of those where they're like they're, they're shivering while they're trying to finish this task. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we we definitely try to balance like the amount of running versus the difficulty of the task like like if you have to run around a lot that's difficulty in itself and it, it's good for the game but you have to be like careful because just running around is not actually that fun and then like, like it. and then like if you just have like downloads is like kind of the worst task because it's just like you're just sitting there and you do wait. So we try to avoid those. But that's ones. tension in itself. Yeah, yeah. So. We mm-hmm. usually try to make that like block up the screen so that you you're vulnerable or something like that. Yeah. Someone mentioned leaves. That one, if if you get it just right, like sometimes the leaves will just like auto like place them into the mm-hmm. the slot. Yeah. It's like oh, there goes three, and you just kind of swipe them really quickly. Yeah. That one's really yeah. satisfying to do on a mo- on mobile. Yeah. What I do love is you've got so many. Like, there's a variety. Like, it's not. Like you ever get bored? You just you're always you play the same games over and over. Yes, but there's there's so many variety and it's it's fun. And with the stress added to trying to do them, it just it never gets old. <laughs> yeah, that's good. The, that's good to hear. Yeah, there's a there's a balance between them being tedious, but also simple enough that they're a distraction. Basically, it's a weird weird balance. Yeah, and there's there's like another level now where it's like there are people that are getting so good at them that it's actually like weird to watch. Like people, people who can like do the, the door switches uh, on Polis. So, 
so fast or like actually um the one that gets me is the oxygen tanks on polis like that one's one where like i feel like the controls are kind of sloppy but like people get so good at doing it that it's just perfectly smooth and well timed and it's just like wow interesting (laughs) we should make more complicated tasks (laughs) (laughs) you know it's funny to me that you say just running around isn't fun Mm -hmm. but to uh reference another very good Among Us meme that I saw recently was what kind of runner are you? And it's just the lobby at the beginning and there's it's oh, like yeah. the figure eight around the boxes or oh. you around all three boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and I relate oh, to that yeah. a lot. I'm a figure eight, personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I am too, actually. Yeah, that's true. It's hard kind of crates. Yeah, a hider. I do the plus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of random. I don't really have a pattern. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sus, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we should probably start uh, winding this down a little bit. Um, before we do, I do want to just kind of kick it off with bringing back the uh, purple imposter jam. That is what brought us all here today. Um, mm-hmm. I want to say... You know, have a good time watching all those animations. There are definitely a lot of really good ones, and then there are some just excellent, really, really mind-blowing ones. So I'm excited for you all to see them. Sweet. I'm curious, do we have maybe a, a, an idea of when when we might hear about the winners? Oh. From us? Uh, just from, well, you're, you're helping with the judging, right? So I guess just as a whole, yeah. I, I don't really know if it's been announced when there will be, when the winners will be released. I'd have to chat with Tom and see, like, what the timeline is and stuff. I have no idea. To my yeah. knowledge, there's nothing set in stone. I've never stone. judged before. Yeah. So. To, my, to my knowledge, there's nothing set in stone yet. So, But if you could have it done by Monday, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, God. Remember Which your Monday? TPS report. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like we probably want to see them soon, but... Yeah. Tomorrow. I literally have time set aside. Yeah, to, I have to a feeling all we all have time set aside tomorrow to, to look at them. So it, it might be soon, but we don't actually know what the process is. So it might be a year or something. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Clipboard, awesome. Google Doc, just like start in Excel. Like, all right, mm-hmm. number one. <laughs> we need an ob- ten objective uh, rating scale. So we'll have to get oh, form a committee no. to in order to get that going. <laughs> Only tens or zeros. <laughs> yeah. <Why not> <laughs> That's classic Newgrounds right there. <laughs> yeah. yep, yep. Five or blam. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You guys got uh, any stuff you want to plug while we have you? Any new stuff? Uh, I think. Uh, we got our inner slot Twitter. That's kind of it. Yeah, that's pretty it's much verified it. verified now. Yeah, we did do that. Oh, yeah, you got verified. Yeah, <laughs> the check mark. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I guess, I don't know. I think our YouTube actually got verified, too. They told us that they wouldn't do it, and then they did. So I think <laughs> that happened. They kind of had to at this point, let's be honest. I guess so. I yeah, there we were getting some... Uh, knockoff channels popping up yeah that's probably what what happened um no i mean you know i i already mentioned we 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 got a bunch of stuff in the pipeline where twitter's the best we usually are the best about putting out uh updates what we're working on via twitter but you know we'll we'll try and we're gonna get our our discord sorted and then that'll be a big thing a even bigger thing and uh you know thanks for playing among us it's it's been great. Thanks for yeah, making thanks. Among Us. <laughs> right. On behalf of the entire gaming community, thank you for the work you put into the game. On behalf of the Newgrounds community, thank you for contributing uh, to the prize pool for the jam, and thanks for contributing on the judging. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing the results. And uh, and also, on behalf of the Newgrounds podcast, thanks for being here today. It's been a really good time. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Mm-hmm. Thank very you. fun. Yeah. Very it fun. very fun. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Support Newgrounds. Thank you for listening to the Newgrounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Long live Newgrounds.